And now it's time for Church Chat. Welcome, friends. It's a joy to welcome you to this edition of Church Chat. I'm uh, joined today by Shane Watson and Lori Robertson, and this edition focuses on these are a few of my favorite things. By the time you're watching it, we will have been in lockdown number two for uh, well over a month. And I'm thinking about some of the things that are sustaining me and sustaining my friends during this time. And uh, those things that are just fun, those things that have spiritual value, and ideally uh, things that are uh, falling into both of those categories. So we're gonna talk about a few of the things that we're uh, really enjoying at this period of time and hope Hopefully, uh, we can pass on some recommendations to you as well. Um, now, I started the conversation, so I'm going to go first with mine, uh, which is a wonderful series on Netflix called Cobra Kai. Uh, and if you haven't watched this, uh, I can tell you it's a continuation of the Karate Kid movies that were huge in my growing up in the 1980s. And I'm sure that that's true. Uh, at, well, Shane, at least I'm sure you've seen the Karate Kid movies. Lori? Yeah, I'm not that old. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not. <laughs> not a matter of age, just a matter of interest. Yeah, but um, it. it's, it's a, wonderful, a wonderful series that uh, originally debuted on, on YouTube. The first few episodes were part of the YouTube uh, premium or YouTube television series. But then it was picked up by Netflix and now has three seasons. It's great fun. Uh, really enjoyable to watch. The episodes are about 25 minutes each, so you can watch uh, a full episode in one sitting without uh, too much difficulty. But what I really love about it is that it totally turns on its head the ideas that you have coming out of the Karate Kid movies, particularly the first, the, the signature, the Karate Kid movie. If you've seen that movie, you'll know that there's plucky Daniel LaRusso, the young kid from New Jersey who winds up moving to California and being terrorized by this gang of karate toughs who are all part of the Cobra Kai dojo. And they're led by Johnny Lawrence, who's kind of the chief, you know, the black hat kind of character. And you walk away from that movie thinking Daniel LaRusso, purely the good guy, Johnny Lawrence, purely the bad guy. Well, we come to find that uh, 30 odd years later, uh, their roles have completely reversed, and actually the story of Johnny's life is much more complex, and we begin to be not so sure about whether Daniel's really purely the white hat and Johnny's purely the black hat. It's a great, great series, uh, not just if you're a fan of the original Karate Kid, um, but uh, certainly for anybody who's looking for some good, uh, some good entertainment. And I think the Karate Kid movies are on uh, Netflix as well, so watch that and then watch Cobra Kai. Okay. That's enough about that. Let's uh, let's move right along. Uh, Lori, do you want to tell us uh, your first first item? We're each going to have a few items here that we talk about. Well, one of the items I'm really enjoying um, is um, I decided I was going to try a bullet journal, and bullet journaling is just a method. That's all of of of, of doing your day, but people have really taken off. It's like the scrapbooking craze that happened about 20 years ago where everybody was doing scrapbooking. Well, now everybody's doing bullet journaling and, and it's, it's your daily planner. I've got a welcome to 2021 page, which I haven't done yet. Um, but this is my word of the year servant. And I my, as things occur to me or as I am reading the Bible or some other good thing that talks about servanthood, I'm gonna be writing them in and decorating this page and, uh, and then I have looking forward, to, uh, oh no, this is my index. So I'm gonna run out of space. I'm gonna need more index pages later. Um, and then I've got a whole bunch of ideas for things I wanna do. And this is my 2021 looking forward, 2020 looking back. And I mean, this, you can go all kinds of ways with this kind of thing, but it's so much fun. And so then I have my, my weekly spread and uh, what I've been doing that day. And I have a, a place for a big three of the week. So it's just trying to, give me something to propel me into the future a little bit and think about things that are coming up as opposed to um, what I usually try and do, which is to live in the moment. So if you're living in the moment right now, it's all too easy to get stuck in this idea of, well, I'm, I'm stuck at home. I can't visit my friends in person. It's all horrible Zoom meetings. It's, you know, we're, everything's a challenge. So this helps me to get to a point where 
I can I can do something that's fun. And this one as a page I took a lot of time on, which is my target revenue for the year and how I'm going to make it. And then here's my budget for the expenses. So you can use a bullet journal for anything. You can draw and paint in it and you can write your thoughts and then you can, like I'm doing, keep an agenda. And I bought this cover because it has the tree on it, which is my logo. I don't actually have a business card handy to show you, but you've probably seen my beautiful colored tree logo with my name. So anyway, so that is really helping me to just stay ticking along instead of getting mired in, oh my goodness, when's this going to be over? <laughs> Shane, what about you? I, I like both years so far. I, I don't know if they do wax on, wax off in the Cobra Kai. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> All the callbacks to the great stuff from the movies, yeah. Yeah, I've done, I've done some bullet journaling myself. But um, uh, so I'm going to start off with kind of a media related um, thing. And I only subscribe to two periodicals. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to share both of them. So one is that I really love is, uh, National Geographic history. And if you know about National Geographic magazines, then, um, National Geographic history is very, very similar, wonderful, amazing photography and really, um, interesting articles about, uh, history all the way from ancient times to the not so distant, distant past and articles that are, you know, not so long that you can't you can't handle them in 15 or 20 minutes or something like that so i love getting stuff in the mail especially during covid and uh you know when one of those shows up every couple of months uh that's that's really excellent and the other one is is one called lapham's quarterly mm -hmm. and um you can get it at furby house you can get it at most decent bookstores or you can subscribe which i which i do but it comes out quarterly and each quarter there's a there's a theme that runs through the entire uh, magazine and it's really more like a book actually but what it is it's it's an edited collection of writings and poetry and quotes and art um, all the way from ancient times to relatively modern times a really vast collection and diverse collection of authors and writers and artists and all of this is sort of mashed together in uh, in these really their books um, and uh, yeah it's pretty cool so that's one of the things I really look forward to every uh, every quarter to get in the mail. <laughs> I love I want I'm stealing that idea. Love yeah. it. The last one is called Democracy, and uh, yeah they're they're not necessarily themed to what's going on with current events, but sometimes are. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think we could see that one coming as a live topic, or they could see that one coming as a live topic. That's brilliant. Um, I'm gonna continue with uh, the, the media sections of, of my uh, favorite thing. The next one is a podcast. And if you're not familiar with a podcast, um, just think of the words iPod, like that you would listen on and broadcast. That's a, it's a sort of a portmanteau uh, word. A podcast is essentially a radio broadcast, but one that you can listen to at any time by any number of means called Ask N.T. Wright Anything, the Ask N.T. Wright Anything podcast. And N.T. Wright, uh, or Tom Wright, the uh, former Bishop of Durham, uh, a wonderful biblical scholar and theologian, somebody that if you've uh, listened to many of my sermons, you'll hear him quoted uh, with fair frequency. He has a terrific podcast uh, where he sits down with uh, a, a host who uh, then asks him uh, thematically listener questions about all kinds of topics within uh, the, the world of the Bible, uh, theology, church politics, social issues. And Tom Wright has this way of speaking that is, it, it's the rarest thing to find somebody who is so brilliant and so learned. Uh, he's a professor of theology. He's retired from his, his role as, as Bishop of, of Durham. He was an academic before he was appointed and he's gone on uh, to do great academic and popular writing. Uh, and he, he's able to answer questions that are so complex in a way that um, really anyone I think can, can relate to and can understand. And, and it's just, it has fed me spiritually um, during uh, particularly this, this last month. I've actually listened to now 
every episode of the podcast going back to uh, 2018. It comes out every uh, every two weeks. So you do the math on how many uh, podcasts I've listened to. They're about 25, 30 minutes long. And uh, I, I'm now at the point where I have to wait for it to come out every two weeks. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm sort of at a loss uh, waiting for it. But it's just marvelous. Ask NT Write Anything podcast. And you can find that if you've got uh, a podcast app on one of your devices. Or there are also a number of episodes of it that are on YouTube. Uh, just type in Ask NT Write Anything. And I think you will find yourself uh, spiritually fed by that. <laughs> Okay, Lori, I'll pass the baton to you now again. Sure. So um, we were talking about this actually as we gathered the three of us today to, to make this recording, but I, I was mentioning something I'm getting a lot of fun out of. And I think fun at a time like this is so important and, and fun and lightheartedness and something that isn't, you know, important in the sense of democracy or, or theology or, you know, learning something new. I've been, I'm on, I'm on Twitter and sometimes I spend a lot too much time scrolling through the Twitter feed, but I encountered something called Rate My Skype Room. And it's, it's the, the Rate My Skype Room is the tag, uh, uh, the handle. And then they call themselves Room Raider because it's not just Skype now, Ruby's using uh, Zoom. So take a look at what you see today. Here's Jesse looking very wonderful in his library he would get probably a nine or 10 out of it, out of Room Raider because the lighting is right. He's got books, he's got art, he's got intricate little things. If you've ever looked at the top shelf behind Jesse, there's some fun little things up there. Take a look. Mine is sort of, eh, not great. Um, and what they would say about Shane is that, well, gee, that's a hostage video. We, we don't know where he is. Oh my goodness, Shane, are you okay? And well, I'm not sure he is because it says help. So I get a huge charge out of Room Raider, and um, there's a few other uh, accounts like that in various social media that uh, that just lighten us up and make us laugh at how silly the world is, and uh, so you can go have a look at that. So that's my next thing, just having fun. Wonderful. Yeah, I like, I like that. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> my, uh, I don't know what I'm going to go with next here. I've... Um, I've gotten back into sketching and um, and so that's something that I'm really getting a lot of enjoyment out of uh, kind of refreshing my sketching skills back I think it was like in grade two I had a couple of buddies uh, who liked to draw like war scenes so it'd always be like you know a British soldier with a you know cigarette hanging out of his mouth and then on the other side of the page there's like a German and you know the bullets are crossing the page so kind of watching them draw in their free time in class is where my artistic uh, career maybe started. But so I've revived that over the past year. And uh, so I've, I'm amassing a small collection of sketchbooks and I, uh, I've been trying to post some stuff on Instagram once in a while. So I have a Instagram uh, feed and uh, post a few things on there. Try to do like once a day or something like that and hashtag stuff. Uh, so if you don't know what a hashtag is on social media, you know, I might hashtag a sketch like quick sketch or a portrait sketch. But if you click on the hashtag, then it takes you to like everybody else in the world who's hashtagging stuff with similar things. And it's like walking through a digital uh, art gallery of like all kinds of people out there in the world who are, you know, doing similar things, different things, being creative. And it's uh, for me, an opportunity not only to share something from me, how I see things, but also an opportunity to uh, kind of see what other people are doing and that, you know what, there's people out there. <laughs> there I can't, it's hard to see them sometimes, but they're out there and they're doing stuff and, and they're, they're adding vibrancy to the world. Shane, tell us the, um, the Instagram handle uh, your, uh, for your drawing. Yeah, it's not super simple, but um, it's uh, see through my hands with an underscore between each word. And if you're following me on uh, my regular Instagram feed, then there's a link to that in my bio. But uh, every once in a while, I'll post something to Facebook too, but usually stuff on Instagram now. Yeah, I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan uh, of of that Instagram account. In fact, it's probably my favorite Instagram account. 
and every once in a while, even one of my family members shows up in uh, in art form. So I, I just I just love uh, what you're doing there, Shane. It's it's terrific, and uh, yeah, really letting that light shine, which is which is beautiful. I, I guess I'll talk about one of my sort of creative pursuits, which is uh, playing the guitar, uh, which is something I've enjoyed doing. I'm no virtuoso, as anybody who's heard me at Talent Night over at uh, the Parish Hall can attest, but it's something I really enjoy doing. And I learned uh, how to play with a pick, uh, strumming. And um, uh, I was taught by my uncle, who's a professional musician, uh, guitar teacher, toured for many years with uh, various bands and made his living that way. Um, I was taught to play with a pick because he grew up with a father who didn't really want him to play the guitar um, and said, well, I'll buy you a guitar, but if I do, it's gonna be a nylon string uh, classical guitar and you're gonna learn how to play flamenco and you know proper classical. Uh, guitar. And so my uncle spent years and years learning how to finger pick. Um, and uh, so when he was teaching me guitar, he said, you don't want to play any of that stuff anyway. Let's just play with a pick and we'll get you an electric guitar and that'll be uh, the way. I mean, he knew what I wanted to do, which was play as loud as I possibly could and do my best impression of Slash or Eddie Van Halen or whatever. Never <clears throat> reached that level. Um, but now, years and years later, I, I'm thinking to myself, actually, what I'd really love to do is learn how to finger pick better. Um, and so I've, I've been doing that. And there are some wonderful resources uh, online. I know we've got some guitar players in the congregation who uh, may have seen some of these resources as well. But a couple that I've stumbled across, uh, James Taylor uh, himself doing guitar lessons on how to play some of his most famous songs. And he's done this wonderful setup with the cameras where he's actually got a camera inside the sound hole of his guitar. So you can see from the inside of the guitar, you can see his picking hand um, and how exactly he's picking songs like, you know, Fire and Rain, for instance. And so these recordings that I've listened to for years and years and, and I've been trying to parse myself, I literally just typed in Fire and Rain lesson and boom, there was James Taylor showing everything. And then he's got another one that's on his hand like from here and then another one like that. So there's no mistaking exactly what he's doing. It's made me realize just how hard it is to play the guitar like James Taylor does. But anyway, I'm working at it. And uh, that's been that's been wonderful fun. Yeah. Lori, I see you've got a guitar behind you there. Well, now I'm wondering if I should bother. <laughs> but in the, I play the piano badly, but have fun with it. Um, but I've always thought how nice it would be to play the guitar. My daughter plays beautifully and nothing like James Taylor, but still I love listening to my daughter play the guitar. And she strums and she sings. She has a lovely voice. And, um, and I thought, and I've thought about it all this time, why don't I just do it? So I borrowed a guitar from my friend, it has steel strings, um, which are a little harder on the fingers at first, but I think they're a bit easier to play as well. You don't get any of that thumpy sound that you do if you play the string wrong when it's a nylon string. So anyway, I've just started and I've, I found a free app called um, Musician, instead of musician, it's musician, and um, they give you a half hour practice time with the app for free every day. So that's, I'm not doing it every day, but I only just started. And I thought this is sort of the creative thing. But the other creative thing that I've been doing is learning to make rosaries. Now we've, we've done Anglican rosaries as workshop at the church and we've strung them on a wire and, and used a clip to hold all together. And they're lovely and the beads, move really nicely but uh, what i think of as a real rosary is put together with wire that you you make the little links yourself and because of the shape of the links it allows the rosary to to move and it falls into a nice little shape so that you can put it in your pocket or in a little bag and it won't tangle so these little links are handmade by me out of silver wire, not, I mean, silver coated copper, you know, but learning to do that, there's a, a, a half made link at the top. So learning to do that. And, and it's something that you can sit and do while you watch TV. And then if you want to be super, you know, spiritual about it, you can be thinking of a person that you're making it for and praying for them while you make it. And then when you give it to them, it already in a way embodies many, many prayers. Uh, so this is my first one. And it was not a success, really, because it's far too big. Because of I'm, I wanted to make it unbreakable. Rosaries fall apart and break all the time when they're small. 
So I made it unbreakable by twisting the links better and they've kept way too long. So anyway, I'm having fun with that and experimenting. And that was my first effort. And it's, it's beautiful, but I can't carry around with me because it's just too big and heavy. But so being, learning to do new crafts or, or skills like the guitar, that's something I'm having fun with. Shane, are you helping one another there? Yeah, we're helping one another. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, I'm going to I'm going to go with a musical theme for my last one too. I'm I'm no musician, but um uh I, I like to play around a little bit with what I call fun instruments. So uh a little while ago my aunt was cleaning out um some things uh from my grandfather actually. Uh, he passed away a number of years ago, but uh cleaning some things out and came across a couple things that she thought I'd be interested in. And one of them was this isn't the one that uh, that I got because I I kind of broke what what he used to own. But this is this is the instrument which I was given, and I've learned how to make noise come out of it. I'm not sure you'd call it music, but it's a jaw harp, and um, uh, so I've got a jaw harp, and it's kind of fun to just play around with that and see what you can do. And it feels safe because very few people I know play the jaw harp. So no one's going to criticize you because you're doing it wrong. Right? Can you demonstrate? Yeah, I can, I can make a, probably make a noise come out of it. So. <laughs> Love it. So you can, uh, <clears throat> you can put a, a bit of a hillbilly band together, I think. And I also have a harmonica, which I fool around with once in a while. And for Christmas, my sister gave me a, a set of wooden spoons um, that were made in Quebec. So I've got a bit of a percussion theme going. And my dad uh, and my mom traveled to uh, Newfoundland, Labrador uh, no, a couple of years ago. And since then, he's got this idea that he wants to make himself an ugly stick, um, which is another kind of Newfoundland, Newfoundland based instrument. So who knows, there might be a, some kind of hillbilly Canadian Newfie percussion band in, in the family future here. <laughs> Just get a wash tub base and, uh, you know, a washing board and you'll be ready to go. Yeah. That's great. That's wonderful. Wonderful stuff. Um, I've got one more. Can I, can I say one more? Of course. A, a gift to me in the early days of the pandemic from none other than Laurie Robertson um, was uh, this marvelous uh, book of poetry by Malcolm Geit. Uh, Malcolm Geit is a, a priest of the Church of England and a renowned preacher and poet. And this is his book, as you can see, After Prayer, uh, New Sonnets and Other Poems. And um, it's just remarkable. He The, the first part of it um, is titled A uh, after prayer, a response to George Herbert. And um, if you know a, a little bit about uh, churchmen who write poetry, you'll know that uh, George Herbert uh, was one of the, the, the great poets uh, of the English language ever, but also a, a, a churchman, um, a priest of the Church of England. And uh, what, what he's done here is he has um, responded to uh, various bits of Herbert's poetry with his own poetry, and it's it's a treasure. I mean, just a treasure to uh, to see a poet through a poet's eyes. Uh, yet again, that may sound a bit esoteric, and and probably indeed it is. But um, poetry uh, conveys so much meaning, and and a, a preacher who is a poet and a poet who is a preacher is probably the perfecter of the art. So. Um, this has been a, an enormous blessing to me, and I, I commend it to you highly, and I thank you, Lori, for this wonderful gift, uh, because it's been just just wonderful. And in fact, um, you're probably going to be hearing some Malcolm Geit from me in the, uh, the, the virtual pulpit uh, here before too long. Wow. Malcolm Gate has been um, really inspirational to me during this time because he started a YouTube channel uh, in the fall 
called um, something like a uh, visit in the library with Malcolm Gate. And he takes you into his study, which is a little bit bigger than Jesse's and has about six times as many books in it. And he's got so many little artifacts. He's got a pipe stand with like six or seven beautiful pipes. And he'll invite, you'll, the, somebody has holding the camera and he invites the, the camera into his studio uh, or his library. And then he'll pick up a pipe and, then he'll look around and he'll say, oh, I, I was thinking of telling you about this book. And he'll pull out some ancient, beautiful, possibly very, very expensive or, or renowned or, or a completely obscure book. And then he'll tell you about it. And he talks about these themes and they're just little five or to seven minute things. And he'll often sit down, the dog will kind of stumble in and, you know, and then sometimes he lights his pipe or he has said, would you like a glass of sherry with me or something? And then at the end, he always said, thank you so much for coming. I really enjoyed your visit. Do come again. And then it's the end and they're just little things. They're lovely. So he's he's really yeah he's really something like a character from uh, you know Tolkien or or Lewis or, yeah. or so, I mean even his his affect and his his appearance you know you just sort of go here's I I, I don't know it, it you really feel like you're kind of in the presence of I mean not that I've met him personally but uh, seen him lots online and and you really feel like you're sort of in the presence of a of of, of an angel uh, you know he's he's got this sort of otherworldly quality of holiness about him that. Yeah. Um, is just just amazing. Yeah, uh, I bought his sonnets book as well. Uh, so when I fell in love with Malcolm Gate last fall, I bought two of his books. I bought the after prayer one that Jesse you just showed, and I bought the sonics sonnet series that I gave to Shane and it's sonnets on the seasons of the church so there are sonnets uh, during Lent and during Epiphany and uh, uh, during ordinary time and uh, all the way through the seasons of the church and it is divine so Malcolm Gate I mean come on guys get with it and go and listen to Malcolm <laughs> Gate and buy his books everybody oh my goodness yeah so rich that's wonderful yeah does anybody else have anything to, to share? Well, I maybe one last thing. And I, I uh, have discovered recently, as I'm aging, that my vision isn't what it used to be. And and uh, we, we uh, at the Monday morning prayer group that I lead, we do a lot of our work out of the, the uh, BCP, the Book of Common Prayer, which is a tiny book but I discovered that you can get a large print version of the BCP <laughs> and uh, so that's now my go-to that's now my go-to for because I, I don't have to squint anymore or adjust my glasses to see it well especially if, if you're officiating uh, as you both do from time to time in, in church um, it, it can be really really difficult if you're standing there at the at the at the prayer desk to sort of look down at this thing that's like <laughs> what is what is that yeah wonderful good stuff well it's been such a joy talking to you both mm -hmm. uh, thank you very very much for this time and i do hope that all of our viewers out there have gotten uh, at least one or two things that they can uh, explore themselves and we're going to be revisiting this uh, mm -hmm. a couple more times I, i'm uh, determined to see uh, what else is keeping people going during this time what is of spiritual value and what delights us because God's intention is for us to delight in his good creation and the creativity of uh, people around the world. So oh, thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Church Chat and we'll see you again in this space before long. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.